Hi, my name is Elisa Minkin. I am a general pediatrician and I'm also the co-chair of the Jewish Orthodox Women's Medical Association JOMA Preventative Health Committee. And I'm here today with Dr. Rona Novick. Dr. Novick is the Dean of the Azrieli Graduate School of Jewish Education and Administration and holds the Rain and Stanley Silverstein Chair in Professional Ethics and Values. In addition, Dr. Novick serves as the co-educational director of the Hidden Sparks program, which provides professional development to day schools and yeshivas. Dr. Novick developed and served as the director of the Alliance for School Mental Health at North Shore Long Island Jewish Medical Center, where she authored the Brave Belief Prevention Program. Along with scholarly publications on bullying and trauma, special education, Jewish education, parenting, positive psychology, and social emotional learning, she is the author of Helping Your Child Make Friends, editor of the series Kids Don't Come with Instruction Manuals, and her most recent book is Mommy, Can You Stop the Rain? It just came out in 2019. Dr. Novick, thank you so much for doing this with me. Here we are several months, I feel like several months into this uh, coronavirus situation. And I wanted to talk about, you know, helping us cope with it and also what to do when you're not coping. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Alyssa. Thank you, Dr. Minkin, for having me. I'm Alisa, you're Rona. <laughs> okay, that was that. And for, you know, for talking about really very frankly, how all of us are doing, how we are managing, and how we build our resilience and the resilience of our children and our mm -hmm. families. And um, I know you and I talked a few weeks ago, and we talked just this morning about the fact that the new normal just keeps on changing. Right. You know, two weeks ago, who thought that we would be spending Pesach past in our homes? So what we really need to talk about is how we stay resilient and, and how we cope with a longer term, not acute crisis, but an ongoing crisis, because it, 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 this is not post-trauma. We're in the middle of the traumatic situation. It's happening to us all around us and right now. So I, I wanna talk about a couple of things that we know are helpful for our health. And one of those things, is structure and schedule. Structure and schedule are really critical for kind of human well-being. And, and yet, you know, all of the things that we typically depend on for our structure and schedule have literally gone out the window. You know, we are not commuting. I'm usually a commuter. I know the traffic patterns. None of that holds true any longer. So we have to rethink uh, what does structure and schedule mean? And the other thing that I think is going to be so, so important to our mental well-being, and it underpins everything I'm going to say today, is we've got to change our expectations. Absolutely. If we used to wake up in the morning and think, I'm an efficient parent, employee, spouse. I'm going to do these 12 things and run these 30 errands. And all of it is going to be neatly done and packaged by, you know, 5 p.m. today when I'll come home and cook a lavish meal. Well, you know what? We have to just let go. And we have to say, you know what? In these incredible times, if we have a to-do list that has three things on it, if we have expectations that we'll get to three, and if we get to half of one, that's a success. Right, and I just want to say, because every time I hear the word schedule and structure, I feel guilty because I feel like I'm not succeeding at it. And I think that, I think it has to be a day-by-day -day basis where you just try your best. Oh, wait, and I'm if you get sorry. anything done, yeah. even I'm with so your children. Glad. I'm so glad you said that because here's what I mean by schedule and structure. Mm -hmm. I mean, getting up every day. Right. That's a success. At some point. <laughs> Putting on clothes every day. Well. I would say I think it is good for kids and for adults to pretty much get up. You know, it doesn't have to be 6 a.m. or 5.30 any longer. It can be 7.30. It can be 8. It could even be 9. Mm -hmm. But it shouldn't be noon. Right. It, we should, you know, try to keep our biorhythms uh, fairly well attuned. The other thing I want to say about schedule and structure is think a little bit looser than we normally do. Could Monday be Music Mondays when we 
do a music activity or listen to music. And Tuesday is Travel Tuesday. And so the structure I have in my week is that on Tuesday, I watch travel videos. And on Wednesday, Wacky Wednesday, I find some comedy sketches and I watch comedy. Or we write a funny um, limerick together, my family and I. Whatever it is, that's what we, uh, that's what we, what I mean by, by schedule is kind of having something that we can look forward to and that there's a rhythm to our time and our weeks, even in this kind of rhythmless um, time. This un, you know, we're, 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 uh, we're, we're not uh, anchored. We're unanchored. Right. Loaded. Right, and so, I would also say that if you can't do that, you know, maybe not everybody is so um, creative or clever, and I wouldn't want people to feel guilty because I know I can't do that. I just can't. But, you know, even just to have, say, for your children, jobs that they do, and then they can do fun things after on their own and have free time, but that gives some structure to the day. The structure to the day could simply be that it's tuna fish on Tuesday. Right. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything huge or creative. And quite frankly, you know, I don't know what we would do without the resources that are available to us on the internet that have activities and schedules and lessons and schools are sending all kinds of things home for parents. Um, the, the other thing that I, I want to say about lowering expectations um, is don't think that everything that comes through your door you have to do. Every suggestion from the school, every suggestion from mental health professionals, right. every suggestion from parenting experts, from chefs, from cookbooks. You don't have to make every last cupcake and every Passover recipe. Just because it arrives in your email box doesn't mean, A, you have to even read it, and B, you certainly don't have to do it. So know that this is a different time and your body, your mind is going to function differently. Uh, so schedule expectations. The next thing that is really, really helpful in building resilience is purpose. We do so much better when we feel we are helping in some way. You know, years ago in Hurricane Katrina, adolescents in the, uh, I think it was Astrodome, Superdome, mm -hmm. whatever dome it is in mm -hmm. New Orleans, were noted to be very depressed, but there weren't enough mental health professionals to treat them. So they said, well, while we're waiting for an influx of psychologists and social workers and guidance counselors, let's at least keep them busy and let's ask these teenagers to deliver water to the elderly that are housed all over the dome. The elderly can't do the steps. They can't come pick up their daily water and food. Let's make a water brigade of the teenagers. They never needed mental health counseling after that. It's amazing. It's amazing. All they needed was a purpose, was a job. So we have to think about what, what's our job? And, you know, many of us, uh, particularly those of us who are working parents, now working at home and schooling our children, it feels bad to say, you know, find a job and find a purpose. Your purpose is keeping your family healthy and just putting, you know, food in everyone's mouth and getting everyone to bed. But maybe together with your children or on your own, you can put a little sign in your door that says thank you to the postman. Or maybe your children want to write some letters that are going to go to an old age home or to a hospital or to healthcare workers. Maybe you have some ability to sew some masks or to make a donation, but something that feels like you're helping. Um, in some way. It could even just be giving tzedakah. Mm -hmm. That can help to feel like I have a purpose. I'm doing something of meaning. Um, so, you know, lowering expectations, having some ritual and routine, and then um, thinking about how I can help. And the last ingredient I want to put in, uh, well, I'll say two. One serious and one not serious. The serious one is gratitude. Um, the research continues to show the power of positive thankfulness. Uh, it seems to be, by the way, that the research says it isn't enough to think every day what we're thankful for. We actually have to write it down. Really? Find a scrap of paper. Write three things today that you're thankful for. Keep a gratitude list, a gratitude journal. 
it changes our mental well-being. It changes our happiness levels. It boosts our resilience. It even boosts our immunity. So it's good for our health to be thankful. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, even in these dark days, we have things to be thankful for. You know, I've noted that we have a family of blue jays and cardinals that frequent our backyard. Now, were I a working person going to my office every day, I would never have met this, these family mm -hmm. birds that I'm now observing. I've become a red, regular Audubon Society observer watching them to this morning in the rain, they're finding things for their nests. Um, it's just wonderful. And I'm very thankful that I have that opportunity. It's not to be Pollyannish. There's much that we have to be genuinely anxious and sad about, but gratitude makes a difference. Last point. So oh, before you do that, I just want to say one thing that you know, it's also good to articulate it. I mean, I'm never going to be a journaler. It never works for me. <laughs> but, but to say it out loud, and I think it's good for your children to hear. Yes. I've been saying Dayenu, you know, like I've been saying, you know, th looking for things to be grateful for. We have food, you know, we have shelter. We have so much we can breathe. You right. know, and everybody who's healthy is just to be grateful for being able to breathe and to articulate that. I think that that is, is really, it's good for me and it's good for them to hear it. Right. When I say keep a gratitude journal, I do not mean being a journaler. I mean a mm. list. Just literally the act of writing three things on a list each day. Put it on a sticky note. Three things I'm thankful today for. The blue jay, the red robin, and my daffodils opened. Three things. That, it, again, I, I can only cite the research. There's something incredibly affirmative and health producing about gratitude. And here's my, last, here's my last piece of advice. Laugh, have fun, find something that makes you giggle, whether it is a silly video that you save and you can watch over and over again, whether it is a tickle fest with your children, whether it is, I, I don't know, a funny joke. There's a, there's a house in our neighborhood that posts a joke daily. So when you're walking on your daily walk, it's big, it's huge, it's a poster in their windows. And every day you find some punny uh, joke as you walk by. Mm -hmm. Find something that makes you laugh, that makes other people laugh. Allow yourself time for fun. Just play a game with your children or with your spouse or solitaire on your own or on your, on your you know, app on your phone or on your computer. Do things that are fun. This can't be all doom and gloom serious time. And, and one other thing, watch what you watch. Don't become a news junkie. Notice how you feel when you are watching the news. And if it does not make you feel better, we need to be somewhat informed. But, you know, it's 24-7 and breaking news all the time. So, you know, tone it down. You don't have to watch it all the time. I hope these ideas are helpful. But realize that some of us, some of the times, are going to need more. And you know, there was enormous activity on the internet before the first days of Yom Tov by leading mental health experts and rabbis, rabbinic experts, urging people, take care of your mental health, even on Yom Tov. This is critical. It is pikuach nefesh. It is so important that if you need help, reach out and find those sources. I know Elisa is going to share uh, sources that people can um, access. There are many resources that you can make, um, make a, yourself available to um, reach out, whether it's informally to friends to talk about what's bothering you, but certainly to the professionals who can help if you feel you need that support. This is not a time that we should say, I'm going to be stoic. I have to do this on my own. We can only do this together. We can only do it with the help of friends and family, and sometimes with the help of professionals. I just want to say, first of all, the importance of exercise, even if it means you're walking around the same room over and over and over in circles, as if you were on a treadmill. Yes. Exercise is really important. Um, but also, how would you know, how would you differentiate between, you know, just having a hard day, um, everyone's having those, and needing help? How would you know? So first of all, you don't, even need to know because if you're having a hard day 
there's no reason why you can't reach out and talk to someone mm -hmm. and have a professional or a friend or someone say, you know, this sounds like more than a hard day. Maybe you, we need to talk about this. There, there's no, there's no, nothing's lost there. And maybe something's gained. The second is I would look at patterns. You know, one hard day, it happens. We're having a lot of rain and a lot of rainy days in the Northeast. And, uh, you know, they're hard. You can't go outside and you, you do feel the four walls much more acutely than on a sunshine day when I can sit outside and even work with those blue jays right nearby. Um, but um, if you have two hard days and three hard days and a week of hard days and you feel like you can't get past the hard days, then it is time to reach out for professional help. Then it is time to say, why can't I get past this? I mean, the, 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 the problem with making the distinction right now between kind of what is a normal response to an abnormal situation and what is really a mental health need is that we are in the midst of a crisis. And uh, I can't tell you how many people have complained to me about difficulty sleeping. Mm. Now, normally, that's a pathognomonic sign. Normally, that's an indicator mm -hmm. of either medical or mental health challenges. But right now, somebody's saying simply, the only problem they have is um, they're oversleeping or undersleeping or overeating or undereating, quite frankly. Well, I, I can't be far from my kitchen. Of course I'm overeating. The chocolate has my name on it. Mm -hmm. It's falling to me. Always. Always. So, um, so um, you know, we can't use normal yardsticks mm -hmm. to measure in an abnormal situation. So um, we have to give ourselves a little bit of leeway. But like I said, I don't see any real cost especially when so many hotlines and resources are available, many of them free of charge. Many of them you can call and give very little information about yourself and just hear a calming, reassuring voice. Maybe hear some wisdom about something you had not thought about or perspective that you hadn't taken. If that is, is helpful, why not? You know, right, and there's, there's, I'm going to interrupt you, but there's, there's not just hotlines for emergencies. And when I use the word hotline, I mean, in the traditional way of, you know, someone who really is in crisis, mm -hmm. there are warm lines that are free too for literally people to just talk to you. So you yep. don't have to have any thresholds for calling. Correct. Correct. Years ago, one of my patients said, you know, I don't understand why we have to have dental checkups every six months or every year, but we never do a mental hygiene mm. visit. And don't we all just need every once in a while somebody to talk to, to take a look at how we're doing and to see what we could do better to be healthier, happier, better copers and more resilient. You know, Absolutely. I think it's an amazing idea. And this is a time when none of us should be shy right. about needing that kind of support or help. And thankfully our community, both the, the religious community, the mental health community have really stepped up mm -hmm. and like, of they've made warm lines available and resource centers available so that really nobody should feel I don't know where to turn. Right, absolutely. Well, this is so, so helpful. I really, really appreciate your doing this with me. And I want to wish you a good rest of Pesach and stay safe and stay healthy. I'll get one last thing. I just oh, am going to give sorry. a plug. I'm going to give a plug, um, a generic one and then a specific one. Okay. Um, reading is an amazing escape and it's an amazing parenting vehicle. Reading with your children takes you and them to another place. Reading stories about heroes and people who've coped with adversity is a wonderful way to begin the discussion. It just so happens that Alyssa alluded to Mommy, Can You Stop the Rain? which in an eerie coincidence came out on April 1st. It's a book that I've been writing for 10 years about how parents can provide reassurance in uncertain times and how bizarre that it came out in the middle of a pandemic. I never mm. would have wished for this. Uh, but look for those picture books that are soothing, those read alouds that help you and your child feel better at night. And those stories of 
strength and coping and sometimes just those stories of escape that allow you to, for a little while, go to a, another place. That is very helpful. Do you update your um, blog for this situation? Because I, I didn't I give do. that information. I, I've been Life's blogging this month, Life's Toolbox dot wordpress.com at wordpress.com so www.lifestoolbox dot w-o-r-d-p-r-e-s-s dot com okay perfect okay thank you so so much again have a beautiful rest of Pesach stay safe and stay healthy and thank you again so much you're welcome Here are some resources for mental health in the coronavirus COVID-19 crisis. One is OHEL. You can email COVID-19, C-O-V-I-D-19 at ohelfamily.org to get resources from them. Um, there is the National Crisis Text Line. This is not a Jewish organization. This is um, a national one, text crisis, C-R-I-S-I-S to 741741. Um, there's the New York City well line, 188-NYC-W-E-L-L from the Office of Mental Health. It's a support warm line, 844-863-9314. Now, Amudim has an anonymous support hotline, 888-726- Eight three four six and seven one eight nine seven two three zero zero zero. That's from Amudim. There's also support at Amudim A M U D I M dot O R G eight A M to eleven P M. They're available. There's the Refua helpline eight four five seven eight two two zero zero zero, and the organization Relief Relief Help dot org R E L I E F help.org. Um, the New York City number is 718-431-9501 and the Monroe number 845-783-4508. Info at relief help.org.